Welcome to Symphony Workshop with me Gary Clark and this is part 4 of a multi-part tutorial which I'm showing you how to consume a third party API using the Symphony HTTP client component and all figured out using test driven development. Just before I get started let me inform you that I record in high resolution so you don't have to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that will work for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. And welcome. Okay, so picking up where we left off in the last one, we created our Yahoo Finance API client and integration test. That was working fine. We would get the data back from the Yahoo Finance API client. We'd added this serializer. And so now we need to run our feature test and see where we can pick up. And I suspect it's going to tell us we need to create a serializer. And that's exactly what it's telling us to do. So app command refresh stock profile command serializer undefined property. So I'm going to need a serializer. And what I'm going to do is inject it into the constructor like I've done with the entity manager and the Yahoo Finance API client. We don't currently have a serializer. So let's go to composer. And you need to make sure that you're getting a serializer pack, not just a serializer component, which you can do with Symphony Composer require serializer. If you don't get the serializer pack, if you just get the component, then you'll be missing encoders, normalizers, etc., which will make this work. So I've done my constructor injection, and you'll notice I'm using the serializer interface, which comes from Symphony Component Serializer Serializer interface. I think we can run our test again and see where this gets us. And so we have a new error. The type of the price attribute for class stock must be one of string. So this is actually the default behavior for doctrine to force decimals to be strings. So if you think back to when we created this entity, we specified decimals for price previous close and price change. But if you look at these setter methods and also the getters for that matter, doctrine as type hinted strings. The way that I'm going to remedy it in this instance is I'm just going to change these to floats because for this application we don't need that level of precision that decimals give us. It's not like this is a banking application. All we're doing is storing the values that the API sends back to us. So in this instance we can use floats. I'll go and find all of these references to decimal. I should be able to change them all in one go using PHP Storm's functionality. And I think there's one more up at the top. OK, there we go. Previous close. With that done, let's go over, run the tests with our fingers crossed. I'm hoping we'll get a green. And we do, which is great. So that means I can remove all the stuff here because that's all now taken care of with this one line of code. The deserialize method of a serializer does it all for us. What I'd like to do now is address these test times because as you can see here, 2.37 seconds, 1.63 seconds, it's a long time, especially for this kind of test. And the reason it's taking this long is because it's pinging the API. We don't actually need to be pinging the API in our feature test because we've taken care of that in our integration tests. A feature test like this should only run for milliseconds. So what do I propose? Well, I've never been totally happy with this anyway because I'm coding to a concrete implementation. In its current state, our application is hard-coded to one third-party dependency, which isn't good news because things can change. APIs suddenly disappear off the face of the earth. People can put the prices up. They can change their APIs without telling you. So if I swap this out for an interface here, then it makes us more loosely coupled, more future-proof, and it also means that I can use a fake when my tests run. That's exactly what I'll do. So in the same HTTP folder as the Yahoo Finance API client, I'm creating an interface called Finance API Client Interface. And that is what I'll inject into the command. This will enforce just one method, and that is the fetch stock profile method, which we've already been using. So hopefully it won't break any of our code. We'll just be able to carry on as we are. And if you recall, that method took just two string arguments, which were symbol and also the region then we need to go over to our uh, refresh stock profile command we'll change the concrete class for the interface and we'll also rename this because we're no longer saying it's going to be a yahoo finance api client just making it a lot more abstract and we'll call it finance api client I hope my reasons for doing this are clear to you so far. If you do have any questions regarding this, then be free to start a discussion in the comments below. I do respond to them all. 
Let's now go over to the test, run the test and see where that brings us to. OK, so it's saying argument finance API client of method construct references interface finance API client interface, but no such service exists. So a couple of things. We've not actually implemented the interface in any of our classes yet. And we also need to tell our application to use a fake when we run our tests. I'm going to go over to the services or the config forward slash services YAML file and start to define the expected behavior. So this is the expected behavior for dev and production. When I ask for a finance API client interface, give me back a Yahoo finance API client. Let's go and run the test. Okay, so it's saying that the construct method must implement interface finance API client interface, but it's getting the Yahoo finance API client because we haven't actually implemented the interface in the Yahoo finance API client yet. Let's go over and do that now. So Yahoo finance API client implements finance API client interface. Let's go back and run our tests. And I think that should get us back to where we were. Great, back to green. So just to be clear, whenever we ask the container for the finance API client interface, we're getting a Yahoo Finance API client. As you can see from the test, that's still taking a while and it's because we're still using, or should I say behind the scenes, we're still using the Yahoo Finance API client and we're still making that call to the third party service. Let's take care of that now. So what I'm gonna do in the config folder is I'm gonna create a services underscore test dot YAML file and this is convention if we want to create test overrides so just like our services file I create a services key and so what I'm creating here is a binding where when I ask for the finance API client interface I will get back a fake Yahoo finance API client so let's run the tests and see where we're up to and we're getting green so you probably think that we should get a failure because we haven't actually created a fake Yahoo Finance API client but what actually happens is it has a look, sees it hasn't got one and it just reverts and gives us the Yahoo Finance API client so we need to go and create that fake so in the same folder HTTP I'm creating the class fake Yahoo Finance API client and this will need to implement Finance API client interface Run the test again. Okay, this is good. Because we implement the interface, we need to implement the fetch stock profile method. But more importantly, what that tells us is that we are now using the fake. This is a big step in the right direction. Let's implement an empty method and run the test again. So I've just got PHP Storm to do that for me. And we're back to an error that we've seen before, and that is that we're trying to access array values off of null and so our stock profile that we're getting back from our fetch stock profile does not have a value because we're not returning anything so let's go and borrow from our yahoo finance api client we'll take this return which is an associative array with two keys the status code and content so status code is straightforward i'll just leave that as 200 to get the content what i'm going to do is comment out the use of the fake that means it will revert to using the real Yahoo Finance API client and I'm just going to dump out the content because I want to replicate what that's returning and the best way to do that is to simply cut and paste it. So I'll run the test again and I'll grab all this. Then I need to go back to the code, I'll just remove this dump and then back to the fake Yahoo Finance API client and I'll just paste that in. Tidy this up a little bit go over to the services underscore test file and uncomment this run the test again and we're back to green in 630 milliseconds so that means that we're using our fake and it's returning us the correct data now this is okay but i don't like the hard coding because what if you want to test the handling of different responses what i'm going to do is replace the uh, response values with static properties and then I can change them on the fly in my tests if I need to do that. Status code I'll give a default value of 200 so public static status code equals 200 and for the content I'll just give that an empty string so public static content is an empty string and that'll have to be set in my test which isn't a problem. Let's go over to the test and do that now so in refresh stock profile command test in the setup part, I need to 
add a fake to return. So, fake Yahoo Finance API client, double colon, content, and then I'll just paste in that string again. Now, logically, nothing has changed, so hopefully our test should still pass. There we go, 548 milliseconds, all looking good. Let's now run all our tests. So we've got a unit test, a feature test, and an integration test. We've never actually run them all at once before, so this should be interesting. Okay, we've got three tests, 22 assertions, and it's running in 1.84 seconds. Now, we know that our integration test is passing. Do we need to run it every time and see that delay? We can actually exclude it by using this flag here, exclude hyphen group, and we added it to a group called integration, and there you go, it runs a lot faster, and it just runs the unit tests and feature tests and excludes the integration test. Okay, while we're in the mood for improving things, let's have a look at this return from the Yahoo Finance API client. When I created it, I said I wasn't totally happy with returning an array. I much prefer objects. They give you more flexibility, more power. We're writing object-oriented code. Let's try and return objects where we can. So with the um, Symfony HTTP client, we can access methods like this, response, get content, and response, get status code. So I've added that to my test. Obviously it's not gonna work, but I'm gonna run it. We're gonna try and get our code to work like this and we'll work backwards. So we'll run the integration test again. And obviously we get an error. Call to member function, get content on an array because our response is an array at the moment. Now it's not possible to modify the content of the HTTP client response and just pass that back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another Symfony class and that is JSON response, which comes from Symfony Component HTTP Foundation. So this takes the stock profile as array as the first argument, the status code as the second argument. I need to tell the fetch stock profile method to return a JSON response instead. I'm going to run the tests. And amazingly, that also passes. And the reason why it passes is because JSON response also has get content and get status code methods. Okay, so I can go down and clean out this. We don't need this um, array return anymore. And what I'm gonna do is run the feature test and see what happens there. Now, when we run our feature test, then the fake gets injected. So nothing changes the test still passes. Let's go over to the refresh stock profile command and we'll implement our change, which uses the get status code method calls and also the get content method call. So stock profile, get status code, stock profile, get content. Now the fake is still returning an array. Call to a member function, get status code on array. Let's change that, it's easy enough to do. So we'll delete this array and we'll type in a JSON response. And we're gonna actually have to do the um, return a little bit different this time because our content is already in JSON format. So we need to let the JSON response class know that. I do actually think it'd be good to pass in an associative array and have that flexibility, but we're working towards a test. We don't need that requirement at the moment. This third argument should be an array of headers. I'll leave that empty. And the fourth argument is a Boolean to say whether the content is already in JSON format or not. In our case, it already is. So we pass true, the default is false. Run the tests again, and we're back to green. Let's run all of our other tests. So first off, let's run the integration test. No problems there. Let's run all of the tests. All good, and finally, let's run our tests and exclude the integration test. We do that with this hyphen hyphen exclude hyphen group integration. All green. So I think I'm gonna take a pause there. I'm gonna go through and fix a couple of spelling mistakes and also clean up some of the uh, use statements and comments, etc. but I won't make any changes to the code. Things that we still need to cover is the error handling, and we also need to try this out using a real database rather than just the in-memory test database. So I've still got that stuff to come and possibly a couple of other enhancements. I hope that you found this one useful. Be sure to give it a like if so, and don't hesitate to share if you want to help others like yourself help each other out. That's what this channel is all about. And if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon 
I release new recordings at least two times a week and details of my schedule can be found on the discussion tab of my YouTube channel homepage.